Hello friends, Marvin Schulze and welcome back. Today, big topic. Today I want to talk about radical honesty style completion work. So I know that many different uh, teachers, many different schools now use completion work and I'm not familiar with them. I'm not familiar with many ways that completion work is endorsed or recommended, but I am familiar with the one in our radical honesty universe which is, as you can probably guess, has something to do with telling the truth. <laughs> and whenever possible, the direct contact to the very people that are part of the incomplete story. But I want to say, first and foremost, very, very important, please, please, please do not just read Brad's book and watch this video and try to do your completion work. This process requires some actual back work. You need some grounding in reality. You need some experiences with people how this could go. And you need the ability to be with physical sensations and just observe them without having to control your feeling and without having to be right or win an argument. And that really takes some work. So please check in with yourself. I don't know if you've been to any therapy, self-expression workshops, radical honesty workshops, meditation retreats. Please estimate your own skill and see if this is something that you trust yourself you could practice on a smaller scale. So I am very careful to say completion work done in the wrong way can probably be worse than not trying to do it. So that was important for me to say. <laughs> now I want to talk about what is an actual, what is an incompletion? Well, I guess the best way to describe this is that at some point in time, something happened and your memory about the situation is not accompanied by the actual feelings. In other words, that there was some kind of a split happening. And to put this into pictures, I want to use two specific cases. Case one, you do something over the course of growing up that you later find out wasn't all that great. Good thing is I have plenty of those personal examples and I will just pick one. When I was 18, I used to steal at work. So I did a volunteer year of social services and I stole things and I sold them on eBay to buy new shoes. And I'm saying this and I hold my breath and I feel tension here. And I thought at that time, I thought, hey, you know, I'm a gangster. I was hanging out with my gangster friends and I thought that's just what gangsters do. But when I grew up and I was 25, I realized, oh, I don't want to be... No, not that gangster after all, I probably never was. And just then, just then actually, I realized how heavy this incomplete situation weighted on me. Before that, I was kind of suppressing it, which cost me a lot of energy, a lot of energy. But I wasn't aware of it. I was only aware of it later on when I realized how bad I am with money, that I don't trust myself at all with money. And then I tried affirmations, I tried to fix myself, I tried to do positive financial mindset, did not work. Because that big thing, having stolen stuff, that was heavy. So what I did then, and this is what radical honesty completion work would be in this situation, I went back and I talked to the people that I worked for. And I told them, here's what I did, here's why I did this, here's what I think now about myself and this and how I feel and felt. And by doing this, the memory completed because I now had the actual reactions and the actual judgments were spoken to me and the actual feelings. And I could complete these. I could say, yeah, I know it wasn't good. And then they said, hey, you can now forgive yourself. And I was like, thank you for saying it. Started crying. So that situation was completed in reality by bringing a situation that was past in terms of time but not in terms of emotional completion and stories, back into the present with the people, communicate about it, and then have this, oh, thanks God. And it really felt literally like tons lifted off my shoulders. And I knew it was complete, 
because I didn't think about it anymore. And from that moment on, my kind of financial life became better. I trusted myself more. Oftentimes, unfortunately, I had many things that I thought I'm going to take them into my grave. Before I talk about these things, I take them into the grave. The problem about that is that the degree to which you want to take things to the grave, you are already dead because you are deadening yourself to life with this energy being invested in hiding, in repressing, in suppressing. And I'm telling you from experience, suppressing and hiding costs you aliveness. It's not a free ride. It's not like, hey, you know, I can... Another story, I used to cheat on my girlfriends up until I was 24. Incomplete, incomplete situation. It's like I pretended to be different than I actually was. Incompletion. Until I realized I don't trust anybody. Again, try to fix it with more thinking, it didn't work. So the way out is true, into what I avoided. So I went back and I talked to the specific people and taught, told them what I did, how I feel about it now. And by doing that, had this complete memory, like a congruent reaction. So we cried, we got angry, things were expressed. I heard new things I didn't know either. So, and then I trusted myself more later on. So category one is pretty much you do something over the course of your life that you later somehow realize this is holding me back. This is incongruent and the memory I'm having doesn't really fit with the feelings. And there is something iffy. There's just like, oh, you know, like uh, this is like incompletion. Ooh, like something is somewhere here, ooh, spooky. That is a good way, like a boogeyman that lives in your mind. Second category would be over the course of growing up, something happens to you. That at the time of it happening, for whatever reason, you didn't or couldn't allow or didn't know what it would be, the congruent reaction. It could be, let's use a mild example here. Somebody says something to you that you still think about five days later. And you can't stop thinking about it. What an asshole. Then completion would be to go back and to say, hey, you know, when you said that, I laughed. I didn't like that all that much. And then just wait and see what happens. Have a conversation about this. So that would be radical honesty style completion work. One of the bigger, if you have like this kind of, kind of like a spectrum, that was very mild. There are obviously like more heavy things that require much more back work and grounding. Almost everybody, almost everybody I know has some incompletions with their parents. And it could be something like here that's not so, like here, like, I don't know. For me, I had a lot of anger towards my parents and actually admitting that and saying, hey, that I really didn't like, I'm mad at you for what you said there. And then just experience it and hearing them out and then coming to the softer part. So oftentimes uh, when there is still anger in a way, we don't have access to the softness. And in my experience, some people teach different things. In my experience, to really get to the softness, sometimes the anger has to be experienced. The congruent anger has to be expressed and experienced. And then afterwards, there is the softness. So I'm not trying to get to the softness by pushing away the anger. I think anger is something that can be expressed and tolerated. And is one of the natural human emotions that we have. So that would be one of the things when something happens to you that you feel incomplete about. Usually family relationships are good starting points to look at. So that is, these things are incompletion. So pretty much whenever you play many different scenarios in your head about the what could have, would have, should have. And the radical honesty style completion work would be to bring the specific situation that you have all these stories and the, all the regrets Bring it back to life, revise it. And the way we revise it is by using language and contact to the person. Say here, you, this is what I want to say. You say it and you feel probably uncomfortable. A lot of things will happen in your body. 
and you tolerate it to the best of your abilities and you tell the truth about the situation. And that usually brings a congruency and more often than not closes the chapter for good or at least more than before. It's not like, a, it's not like this one cathartic experience will heal your relation. No, it's not true. It's like small bits and pieces, like coming out saying, you know what happened then? I now regret this. And if you do this over time, you will become more whole and more authentic as a person. And sometimes, yeah, it can be like a big cathartic thing that one thing really makes up for 60% of your withholding is possible. So now again, let's get to the counter indications, very important towards the end. There is a real chance that by trying to do this prematurely, that you hurt yourself more than before, that you would be better off not trying and actually first having some counseling or therapy about it or some support or some friends before trying to go out practicing this. I would never recommend this. Never. If you've never been to any radical honesty or similar workshop where you experience this with people that are willing to practice. This is so important that you practice saying things and you stay with what you evoke in your body. And especially, I don't recommend it in cases of abuse, severe physical abuse, emotional abuse, where you are at risk of being re-traumatized, please don't do it. Please don't do it alone. Don't go there. Don't try to solve it in this way just after watching this video. There might still be a way to do this and highly likely, more likely than not, you need the proper compassion for yourself, proper noticing, proper abilities to express and many other things. So what you could do though is, I think, I think, I think that telling the truth is an ability that we all have. I think there's probably for everybody watching this one situation that you today can allow yourself to tell the truth about. Maybe a super small thing. So you can practice these things in little stretches. So this is not about finding the biggest incompletion then shock yourself by trying it, then it's not working and then you freeze more than, and you get smaller. It's about little bits. I take one step into discomfort, then I see, ah, not so bad. So my comfort zone expands. So if you want to practice this, practice this in small stretches, telling the truth about things that are incomplete and that you haven't been honest about. I think that's all I want to say about this for today. See you soon.